I've got this amazing Figma prototype. Looks beautiful, pixel perfect, but it's all fun and games until I get this into the hands of real users and do some usability testing to see if it works for our target audience. But I've got to find participants. I've got to set up a study. I've got to send them the prototype. I have to wait for them to test it and I have to analyze the results. It's a lot, but I am going to make it super easy with UX Tweak. So what we're setting up here is a remote, unmoderated prototype test. So the first thing we want to do is set up our prototype in Figma. I have this little design here and it is meant to be a meditation app. So you can scroll through these meditations and then save them. So the task that I want to check if a user is able to do easily is to browse, to favorite something, and then to go find their favorites and unfavorite something. So the way I've set this up in Figma, I have three covers. So here we are, we can vertically scroll through something. We can favorite this and it says added to your favorites. Then I can click on the heart and I can browse through my favorites scrolling vertically and horizontally. Then I can unfavorite something and then it disappears. So we want to see if we can get our user to accomplish this task. Now, this is really crucial to remember when you're setting up your Figma prototype. So when I started this, I had one file and I had a few pages in it. And one of those pages was called draft. So I was just setting up a few different prototypes, testing a couple of different interactions. And so that was selected as the first page in my file. So when I went over to the second page where the final prototype lives in Figma, and I went to prototype and I clicked share and I pasted that share link into UX tweak, it didn't work. So the trick is that if you have a file with multiple pages, you have to make sure that the prototype that you're going to be using for your study is positioned as the first page in your file. So you can have multiple pages in your file, but you have to make sure that the prototype you're going to be using is that first page. Now that is my first page. And all I need to do is go over to play so that I'm viewing the actual prototype and then click on share prototype. And you want to make sure that anyone with a link can view this and then you're going to copy the link. Now, if you actually want to know how I created this prototype in Figma and made this design, let me know in the comments and I will do a tutorial on that and share the design file. Over in UX tweet and sign up for a free account. And once you're in here, you're going to see a dashboard. What we're going to do is go to prototype testing. So once you click that, here's the main screen where you're going to be setting up your study. We're going to name it and I'm going to call this favorites. Then you can choose the respondent identification option. So if you want to keep their information anonymous or collect their email addresses or something else, uh, then you can do that and you can password protect it, or you can have a private and you can have a private study that's password protected or no password. So I'm just going to keep this open. And you can also set the limits of how many respondents you have or a date that you'd like this to no longer be active. So participants can't access it anymore. And next is the fun part, the designs. So UX tweak has made it really easy to just paste the prototype link. So we're going to paste that link that we just copied from Figma and just make sure you're pasting the prototype link, not the share file link, and then click import. So it will ask you to allow access to that Figma file. So we're going to do that. And then we have two modes that we can choose from the one-to-one -one Figma mode. And that means that it displays the prototype exactly how you've created it in Figma. So whatever micro interactions, transitions, animations that you have, those will be brought in verbatim. But what this means is that you can't tweak those things inside of UX tweak. So if you have a very simple prototype, maybe a screen to screen flow, you might want to choose the simplified editable mode. That means you can use UX tweaks features to kind of connect the prototype together and use their own hotspots so that users can select those. I'm going to go with a one to one Figma mode because I really built out the prototype in Figma. Once you do that, make sure that you are seeing all of the different main frames that you saw in Figma. If not, if you just see maybe one component or one screen, and you know that there are more screens connected in your flow, then it might not have imported correctly. So go back and check, make sure that page is correctly positioned in your file and make sure that, you know, your file's nice and cleaned up and tidy. There's not a bunch of extraneous frames lying around. Now UX tweak is going to communicate with Figma. So when there are changes made to the Figma file, you'll want to come in here and click on synchronize and that will keep everything in step. Next, we're going to set up our tasks. 
So now we've got to write our tasks. And if you've never done this before, there's a few guidelines that can help you create really successful tasks so that you're not leading the user to do anything and you're getting really clear, useful results. I recommend that you check out UX Tweaks guide for questions for usability testing. There is a great write up here on how to write usability testing questions and tasks, as well as a video that you can check out. So check the card linked in this video to view that. So in the task tab, we're going to add our first task. This is T1 here. And then the first thing we're going to do is select our starting and ending designs. So if you click on this, you'll see all of the designs that were imported. And we're going to start with the first one, which is the horizontal scrolling. In order for this to be considered successful, we're going to select the screen as, as the snack bar fade, because once they have tapped something, it will be added and the success notification will let them know that it was successfully added. Okay, so you can also limit the number of designs. I'm, I don't need that. And we're gonna write our question now. So mine is gonna be browse and select a meditation about connection and add it to your favorites. So we're just testing if this functions correctly, if the user understands and likes that and it makes sense to them. Then we're gonna add another task. This is T2. So for this one, we want to say, find your favorites collection and unfavorite the selection you previously added. And so for that, we're going to go to favorite section. I'm going to start them off there. And then the ending design is going to be unfavorited. So there are a couple of other options here. If you want to randomize this task order, if you want to allow the respondents to skip any of these tasks, or if you want to have any questions asked of them afterwards, then there is a great question bank here. You can ask them to do certain things such as describe, you can try to get their impression of something, whether you think there's a benefit to it, um, whether it's a memory recall. So there are lots of little questions that you can follow up with. So that question bank is really helpful. So now we're going to go to messages and we can customize some things here to kind of welcome our users and, and guide them through this study. So this will probably take, let's say five to 10 minutes to complete. And then you can go through the other messages and customize those. So the questionnaire tab is really important. This will help you add any screening questions. So if you're sending this study out to a bunch of people that you don't know, or you're recruiting participants, then you may want to add a screening question and say something like, um, have you ever used a mobile app before? Maybe you want to screen out people who have never done that. So you might want to add a screening question, which really just, qualifies or disqualifies people. If there are any specific survey questions that you want to ask them before, this will add those pre-study questions onto the study and then post-study questions. So after they've finished this, you can follow up with questions afterwards. And finally, now we actually have to get this out to people. So let's go through a couple of the ways that you can actually recruit people to do this study and test your prototype. First is you can simply share the link to this. So you copy the link, maybe you have your own email list or your own set of subscribers or your own set of people in mind that you want to share this with. So you just copy this link and share it with them. The next thing you can do is order respondents. So this is where you let UX tweak do all of the work for you and you can create a panel for this study. So this is really great. It's actually a quite an affordable solution. So this is going to take you over to the recruitment panel. And so you can title this favorites panel and you're going to select the study that we just made and then you can select the research topic let's go with health and nutrition and now this is where you can target this to find the correct participant panel so you can have the number of participants i think a good study needs at least five let's say we want 10 and then the max duration 10 minutes long so you want to recruit for a total of seven days and then you can select gender age range let's say we want it somewhere between, I don't know, 25 and 40. And now it'll show you for this, it's about 200 bucks. So if you really need to get it out there fast, get some qualified participants, then I think this is a great option. And then you would just place your order. Now, the other way to do it for free is back in the recruitment tab of your study. You can recruit from your own database. You can connect it here and then create custom email invitations that will get sent out to them right from UX Tweet. And then finally, this is really handy. You can do an on-site recruiting. 
So this gives you a plugin that you can embed in your website. And that way, when visitors come to your site, you can recruit them right from there. And you can customize everything here. You can add in your website domain name. You can customize the appearance of the widget, the style, the colors, and it will look something like this. And you've probably seen these at the bottom right hand of websites before it pops up like this, and then it will ask them to help you make an improvement to your product. So you can do everything really easily from here, whether you pay for a study and recruit participants or you recruit them from your own user base. So let's preview our study and see how it looks. All right, so here's that welcome message that we customized and then the instructions for the user on how to go through this test. It gives you a second to read through the first task and then we start it. So now it's gonna open up the Figma prototype and so if I'm the user, then I'll probably try to test out what I can do here. I can favorite and unfavorite something. And it says, select a meditation about connection. So this one is about connection. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And it says, add it to your favorites. They can continue to click around, but they've satisfied that first task. So then they can click done. And then we can go to the next task. Now the next one, again, the instructions are anchored to the bottom here and we want them to be able to find their favorites collection, uncheck something, and then it disappears. And then they're done with that. And so if there are post-study questions, those will show up here. I haven't added any, so we'll just go to next. And that's it. So for that, we are going to launch our study. So click on launch. And when you are ready for liftoff, it will let you know if there are any errors. And because I configured some study questions, but I didn't add any, we need to go back there. So we're gonna go to questionnaire and uncheck these because I don't have any of those questions. And then we're gonna click launch again. Okay, so we are ready for liftoff. Now, it's important to note that once you click launch, most of these settings are gonna be locked. You're not gonna be able to change them and that is just to protect the integrity of the study so that everyone that takes it, they're experiencing the same study and that your results are going to be more equal across the board. So as that's launched, we're going to be able to share this. So go to your active studies and click this context menu to find that link to copy the study address and send it out or use one of the recruitment options. Now, the last thing we're gonna do is analyze the results. So back in the dashboard, we're gonna click on the results on our study. And this is really the most fun for me to go through all of this stuff and have these metrics to look through. So you can see a summary here. I just sent this out to two people and we can see where they're from. We can see their time on tasks. The respondents are broken down further and you can now filter responses. You can recalculate and analyze different things based on what you're sorting here. And on the analysis tab, you can see further breakdowns, all of the successes and fails and lots of different metrics. And this is great if you are doing your own case studies and you've created a great design and a prototype. You really wanna have some real data to add into your case studies to show the outcomes and the results and how you analyze and handle these UX metrics. And so you can go through the different tasks that you have here and then you can export it as a PDF and it will format it now into a lovely report that you can share. I also have a 50% off discount for you for your first month on UX Tweak. It's available for the next month. So if you don't have an account, head over to UX Tweak, select the business plan and enter the code here. If you're already a user, just head to your account, click on manage plan and enter the code there. You can get even more discounts to UX Tweak and other incredible design tools as a student of our product design course. So check that out and watch this video next.